information. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, so if, if uh, Adolfo, if you, if you don't mind, um, we next up have uh, Adolfo Garcia uh, talking about uh, leveraging Kubernetes SPDX tools to create your SBOM. Please take it away. Hi, thank you. So let me start my screen share here. So, so good, good day, everyone. Uh, so welcome to, uh, to this talk where we are going to showcase some of the work that we've been doing to generate the uh, build materials for Kubernetes. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Adolfo Garcia. I am a technical lead with Kubernetes Seek Release for release engineering. I work in a small company in Mexico City called U-Servers. I am the dad of two girls and I like to tour the world on my bike. And I'm here because I recently led the Kubernetes deployment effort, which is still about work in progress, but uh, we already have some results to show you. Um, so first of all, I would like to uh, talk a little bit about uh, SIG release and what we do. So uh, SIG release is a special interest group that takes care of uh, coding the new Kubernetes releases. And we are in charge of maintaining the Kubernetes release process, which builds the artifacts, pushes the images, um, um, tags the repositories and so on. Uh, we are also in charge of uh, supporting the release team that gets um, new Kubernetes releases. And we also manage the uh, changes that are backported to the, uh, to the supported branches of Kubernetes. So I would like to uh, give a brief overview of what's in a Kubernetes release so that you can understand the problem where we, that made us set out, set out to uh, build, uh, build materials for it. So Kubernetes is a large uh, open source project, one of the largest in fact. So we have many uh, architectures and platforms uh, supported and we produce artifacts for some of them. So for example, if we take the images that we produce in a given release, for example, we, uh, we produce these images for all of these um, architectures. And if you mix and match those, uh, you can see that uh, we produce a large number of images and artifacts with each uh, release. So each month we, we also cut the, the patch releases for, uh, for the supported branches. We typically it's three patch releases for, uh, so currently we have 121, 20 and 119. And uh, if you take into account that we also produce binaries and other things, it, uh, it, 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 the necessity to keep track of all of these uh, artifacts uh, starts to become um, an issue, right? So some facts, uh, we handle uh, artifacts for three operating systems. We have six architectures. So as I said before, we produce 30 images. And 53 naked binaries, which uh, are the utilities that you can download and run as uh, directly like kubectl, kubeadm, for example. We also produce a set of tarbar bundles, which have some of the artifacts inside of them. And uh, some of those binaries are in there. And we also produce a, a tarball with all the source code. We produce packages and documentation like the release notes. So uh, part of the charter for our SIG is to provide guidance and tooling to facilitate the production of automated releases. So um in this period this is taken directly of a charter so in this period what we've done lately is that all of the coding all of the code that uh, powers the kubernetes release process we've started producing some um, little tools to uh to that in general purpose tools that users can use and incorporate and use in their own projects some of these examples are for example the release notes tool, which generates uh, a release notes document from the information found in GitHub PRs, a GCP builder, which is a tool to trigger a cloud builds in Google Cloud Build, and publish releases and a utility to update your Kubernetes, uh, your GitHub um, releases pages. It can oh. support updating uh, assets and also having a template of what gets published there. And as of late, we uh, derived from the effort that, that we're leading here, of, that we're uh, doing for the build materials, we produce a, a little utility called BOM, which um, helps you publish a, a build of material. 
So um, circling back to the bill of materials thing, um, I lifted this definition of a bill of materials straight from the ntia.gov website. So a uh, software so bill of materials is a, is a record, right? So what do I think when I think of a bill of materials? I mostly think it's a, an inventory, right? So I, I mean, I'm, it's like an inventory of things that I might find in, a, in my software release. And I, it makes me, it allows me to verify the provenance of the artifacts, uh, the build, the modules, the, the dependencies, check that the artifacts are complete and so on. But I would like to give another focus into the release. So we are SIG release, not SIG SBOM, right? So I would like to shift the focus a little bit into what a software release entails. So. When I think of a software release, I think it's like putting an extra layer of meaning on top of a release, of, of, on top of the artifacts that get produced. So in a software release, you generally group the artifacts in a sense that would make uh, more most usefulness or sense to the people that are consuming them downstream. So if I think uh, in the previous slide, we have like a inventory of the, everything that's packaged in my release. But the software release itself uh, presents even the same artifacts um, uh, to the consumer in different ways. So, for example, if I think about uh, uh, this picture here of a little store or market, I can find, for example, tomatoes being sold as uh, just, just to consume them from there. But I may also find the same tomatoes inside of the store in, I don't know, uh, maybe a salad or maybe a sauce, for example. And I think of the releases in the same way. I can find the same binaries inside of the table that we uh, that we publish, or maybe inside of the of the RPM packages. So it's um, it's this layer of meaning that we focus on. So uh, we focused on uh, building a tool that can accurately describe the, the artifacts that we produce uh, after each release cut. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. So when we have, when we consider a, a, a building a bill of materials for one of our releases, uh, it makes sense to build a bill of materials uh, that will be most useful for uh, the consumer that will take it. So uh, if you think of building a, a bill of materials, you may start adding your source code to it, then after that, you may also list your container images inside of that. Then you may add um, binaries to, to it and things start getting crammed in there. Uh, you have to put more stuff in, then you have uh, packages maybe, then you have to consider your dependencies and then the indirect dependencies and all of a sudden you find lots of things in there. Uh, that is an emoji, my pets and an actual kitchen sink thrown into the bomb if you're wondering. So, um, what we try to do is uh, find a way to organize this better. Um, uh, so it would make sense that we produce uh, bills of materials um, separate to and better designed to um, what will eventually consume them. So um, for example, if you have your source code, it would make sense to uh, make it available in bill of materials for uh, something that would uh, an automated process that may analyze the bill of materials for it. When you're dealing with images, it makes sense to have like a, a more linear bill of materials that may be consumed by something that specializes in images. For example, I may buy, I may build at some point a admission controller for Kubernetes that scans the bill of materials and only allows uh, images that are complete, uh, for example. Uh, same thing for binaries and RPMs. Uh, at some point, you could envision a tool that reads a bill of materials and analyzes the contents before uh, allowing an, an RPM. It's just an example, nothing we're aware of that. So, what we set out to do is uh, try to organize this in a better way. So, in uh, the first thing we did is uh, uh, starting to leverage the actual uh, features of SPDX to build a build material. So first thing that you would wanna do is have your source code separated in a in its own package. Uh, then after that, if you think about it, uh, what I was saying before, it would make sense to have your images 
uh, available with their own bill of materials, which you can separate and then link using the SPDX uh, features back to your uh, to your source code um, bill of materials. And then if you think about uh, your images, uh, what is an image? In the end, most of the time, an image is a set of um, tables, uh, and you can think of those as in package by themselves. And then most of the time, you would have a an image um, index that points to them. So you can also add uh, a package for that and have them marked as a, a variant. And um, in the end, you can also split and your SPDX um, bill of materials to a separate um, document by itself and have them all linked using the SPDX features. So as I was saying before, all of the code that we produce for the Kubernetes release process, we uh, have been trying to spin it as a separate tool for all the projects to use. Um, and currently uh, it's named BOM. Uh, so we are in deciding if we rename the tool and maybe even splitting into its own repository by itself. So this is the way it works now. Uh, currently the easiest way to, to run it is that you CD into your, into your uh, repository, simply run BOM generate like, like the example here and it will go and scan your source code and package it. You can add other artifacts after it is produced and, uh, to, your, to your bill of materials by specifying them like this. Um, now, uh, as we said in the earlier example, when you have a large number of, uh, of artifacts produced by your build, uh, it quickly, the command line interface starts to become cumbersome. So what we, built into the tool is the capacity to do this, a declarative as bomb definition. So basically what you do is you write a, a YAML definition file for your, for, your, for your build, detailing everything that is going to go in there. You simply run bomb generate with the configuration file. And this way you can have a more a, a more complex uh, bill of material to find, and you can also do it uh, at, uh, in CD, uh, at CIC, in your CI/CD pipeline. Uh, you can also have lots of sources um, to to analyze inside of there. So um, with that, I would like to give a little demo about our, uh, our tool running. So uh, just uh, so to demonstrate how this uh, demo is going to work. What where I'll demo now is going to build this. So I, we I have a little project in GitHub, and using Tekton, it's going to pull my source code. It's going to build an image, push it back to GitHub uh, packages. Then using that, using the the build artifact, it's going to generate an SPDX um, build materials using uh, describing my source code, a file, and the image. Then using cosign, it, it will going to, it's going to sign the image and upload the signature and the bill of materials back to uh, the, the GitHub repository. So let me switch uh, my screen to my terminal here. All right, so. Um, if I, so this is my project. It's a simple project. It's something I've been sewing around. Uh, it's a, a little Go-based project. So an important thing is that our tool currently has support for analyzing the Go um, dependencies in projects, uh, but we do not support other languages. So Kubernetes is a Go-based project, so it's it only supports that for now. Um, so. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to run uh, the a Tekton pipeline, uh, which is going to start the process. So if I go into my into the logs here, um, so right now the the pipeline is currently running. It is uh, cloning the repository. Now it's starting to build my project. So 
so I, I can, while I build, I, I could uh, show you, well, I, I can show you the, the, the actual JSON files later. So uh, it's the image is built. It is now pushing it back to GitHub here. And now JSON is tagging it. So this is the SBOM generation running. So the first thing you'll notice here is that it downloads all the licensing information from the SPDX website. This information is used to train a classifier, which will then be used uh, to find the licensing information inside of the of your source code. So using 474 licenses, it correctly detected that my project is using Apache 2. Then it will read your .git ignore file and apply that to the scan uh, directory in your source code. Uh, and then it will start running and uh, analyzing the dependencies. So from seven direct dependencies, it calculated a list of other of 12 dependencies in the end. Then uh, it, it will actually go into the, each of the Go modules, scan the licensing information in them and uh, determine the license uh, that is found, found in each of the dependencies. Um, it will reuse your Go local Go path, uh, so it doesn't have to download everything that it doesn't need to. And then after that, it will process the image reference. So keep in mind that this is a, a, an image that is already uh, published up in, in the repository. So BOM will actually go and read the registry and pull down the layers and build the develop materials describing everything it finds in there. So um, here is the, it's determining the actual layers. So the layers are here, the layers of the new image. An important thing to note here is that uh, we have this option to uh, go and perform a deeper analysis of the, of the images themselves. So right now, as the analyze layers uh, option is turned to false, it will not go into the the actual content of the tar files. The tar file, each of the layer tar files will be listed, uh, but their contents will not. So I can inventorize the, the layer tar files and have the, the signatures, the, the actual checksums verified, uh, but we are not going deeper into that. So this, this flag will, if turned on, it will go on go inside the, the layers and uh, perform so, for example, it can auto detect the, the distro list bases that we do in, that we use in Kubernetes and perform some, 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 some uh, analysis of the things that it finds in there. So in the end, it, uh, it builds my, my pack, my build materials. It defines that my source code has 35 relationships and it writes it to a file and then uh, it, the, the last step uses cosign to upload the bomb and sign the image and upload it and upload both, uh, both things there. So if I take a look um, to my repo here and the results that I get is that I find the beta tag that I pushed, here's the build materials and the container signature, the image signature. So I can download the SVOM using cosign to check the results. So um, one thing I would like to show you is the um, SVOM definition file which you have here. Um, so this is the, uh, a simple example. Uh, it, it lists my name, the name of the project, the um, the uh, the artifacts I want to analyze here, and if I see at the expected results, I can see my build materials here. Uh, some of the some of the information I specified in the YAML files are here. So this is a readme file. Uh, if you see, if you take a look at the definition file, I added uh, the readme file as a separate entity, and it's it's listed here outside the packages. Then there's a package describing the source code here. And then if I go down here, here's the, uh, here start the dependencies. Uh, so for example, uh, here's a Go module and uh, it went down and, and read the licensing information into that. 
So uh, the licensing uh, text is included in here. This was a requirement from the Kubernetes uh, steering committee that we include all of the licensing information in the build materials. Probably this will be an, a, um, um, an, an option further down. And so in here's the description for the images. Uh, so the images it pulled from the repository uh, are listed here. And, um, and yeah, that's basically it. So I can switch back to the, to my presentation. I can show you here the actual uh, Tecton pipeline that run. So as I was saying, had it first build the image, it uh, then after that, it build the bill of materials, which is uh, what we saw happening there. Uh, and then finally, sign the image and upload it. And OK, so back to the presentation. Um, so uh, a few words about the future direction of this tool. Um, uh, we are thinking about uh, the future of it. Uh, so currently, we need to still build uh, the analyzers for RPM and dev packages, which are still a uh, work in progress. Um, I would like to add a more expressive YAML definition into the tool so that you can express more complex relationships uh, declaratively. Then uh, I would like to integrate our tool with the official uh, SPDX libraries from the Linux Foundation so we can get support for, for other languages dependencies. Uh, currently, our tool only outputs to tag value format of, of the, the tag value format of SPDX. So I would like to uh, also publish to the other uh, formats. Then uh, I would like to add some validation of the tool. Uh, uh, that is uh, at least that it, the thing can go back and inspect that what it interpreted is correctly expressed in its the current state of the artifacts. Uh, I would like to add some SPDX uh, uh, visualization. Uh, this is, I think, an important um, thing to have because, as you saw when I was trying to explain the bill of materials previously, it, it is a difficult for a human mind to interpret what is in there. So a machine can read and interpret the the relationships and artifacts found in there. But uh, I would like to build into into our tool something that helps a human make sense of what's contained in there, what's contained in what, what the relationships. And finally, uh, when things start settling down, I would like to add signing capability to our tool. And um, with that, I, that said, uh, I, the presentation should be available soon and uh, it has links uh, for the tool. And if you want, you can reach me at Puerco almost everywhere and feel free to, uh, reach me and ask any questions. Yeah, so we've got a couple uh, questions in the chat. If you can tackle as many as you can in the next nine minutes, I want to try to stay five minutes early if we can. Sure. Uh, okay, so let me go to the questions here. Um, okay, I'll, I'll start going, uh, going back in the questions. Um, are you planning to link CVA reports to that SPDX doc visualization? Uh, not currently. So we, the CVA reports are published by Kubernetes in the release notes, uh, but uh, we, uh, we don't have plans of linking those, uh, not currently at least. So would like to hear uh, a good, um, a good, uh, a good use case for that. We can build it. Um, there is uh, lots to compare your SPDX against the uh, yes, of course. You can only scan for all. how do you plan to handle uh, how do you plan to handle those OSS licenses not on the SPDX list of files containing OSS license snippets? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, currently, our test cases for licensing and scanning have been pretty much constrained into the usual licenses that we see. Uh, currently in a semi-scientific 
thing I did, I, we have around 97% of accuracy in the classifier. So uh, currently it's pretty well, pretty accurate for our use case. But uh, if you introduce another license, it may turn a, 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 an unexpected result there. Uh, is go download a prerequisite for collecting licensing information? Uh, yes, so currently uh, it, it, it won't need, it, it won't necessarily download the things because things may already be there after building the, the things, but it, 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 it needs to download uh, the modules and read the information from, uh, from in there. Um, a link to the bump tool. Yes, uh, it's uh, in, the, in the slides, which should be there already. Then uh, is the bump tool designed to be used outside of Kubernetes? Yes, so uh, we've spent a good deal of time uh, building things into the release process. So we would like, the objective is that all of this code doesn't stay constrained into the Kubernetes release process and that other people can benefit from that. Um, okay. All right, so I think those are the questions I have here. I hope so there are new ones. Uh, there are quite a few distributions of Kubernetes. Is the tooling that you developed also compatible with downstream projects? Yes, so this, uh, so the tools that you, that I just showcased analyze, I used to analyze the, the artifacts that we produce, but downstream, if someone has another distribution of Kubernetes, can take these tools and apply them and analyze their artifacts, uh, just in the same way that, that we do. Um, and uh, yeah, I think those are the current questions. So, um, just a final note, uh, I'd like to thank all of the, all of the community around the, the SPDX um, uh, efforts going around. So a lot of your advice and comments and have been incorporated into this effort. And it's, it's still going on. So if you have suggestions, comments or whatever, um, we are more than welcome to, to hear them. Um, Excellent. Okay, well, thank you very, very much, uh, Adolfo, for the presentation. Thank you, everyone here, for uh, all the great questions.